I can't believe I'm looking at this icon on my Nintendo Switch. And to think, only a couple hours after the Direct. But here it is, everybody. Metroid Prime Remaster. Um, this was 40 bucks. Nintendo and Retro Studios present... Well, who developed this? Was it Retro that remastered it? Hmm. I don't know if we have that information. Oh, man. It's the fucking intro. Did they... I guess they had to up this beginning part, too. Wait, why it was the extras? Glowing concept, soundtrack gallery. Yeah, we're gonna turn this up. I specifically waited so as not to play this game. Like, I didn't want to play it and then, a, a, like, a remaster. And this is even better because I was just expecting the trilogy with better controls. And now we get new visuals. So... resolution. I can see the, the lighting. Like, there's like subtle shading and lighting that I really like. It's nothing too drastic, but aside from the better textures and models, it looks good. There's some anti-aliasing. Well, actually, that there's a little scumminess over there, but that's okay. It's the switch. Wow. Sam. Okay, now I'm wondering with the dual stick controls, you shoot with, with R. Which means, as a result of that, you can also shoot with A for like fast tapping, but R has like a good way of doing it too, because you can tap kind of quickly. Lock-on is still L, L2, or ZL in this case. Oh yeah. No, there's definitely some, some improvements here. I can't believe they shadow dropped this. I just, I can't believe it. But, I mean, it eases the pain of not having heard of Prime 4. Well, you know what I mean, not having heard of. Uh, <laughs> essentially, we got a title and then a video saying, we're very sorry, it doesn't exist right now. I guess Retro did this, chat. Unless I can find otherwise, or someone else can. I, I don't have that information, but I think it appears that Retro might have done this. Doubt? It said Retro when you started. Yeah, but I mean, it would have to anyway, right? It, it appears to be a, like a really... Like a really uh, detail-oriented remaster. And I hate to shit on the Switch, but I will anyway. It's not a very powerful console, but it still looks really good on it. Even though Metroid Prime, I thought, aged really well, visually. Gyro plus... Oh, gyro controls, too? Oh boy, gyro. I kind of don't think gyro... I mean, you can adjust the sensitivity. I kind of don't think I need it. I feel like the dual... Plus lock-on is going to be good enough. Let's see if you can still see Samus's face. Uh-oh, that's a bad texture. I always thought the interiors of this game looked really good, and, and still continue to look good. It's some of the exteriors that didn't... do all that well. Like some of the outside... like... greener areas. I wonder if they're going to do this for Prime 2 and 3. I mean, they should. Two is actually, like, maybe better in some ways, too. I love Metroid Prime 2. This is also a good way to reintroduce people to the Metroid Prime series. It's like, well, here's the first one, and it's very, very palatable to play. There's a lot of lore if you want it. Like, that's the thing about Metroid Prime, you can just skip all this. You only need to, like, use the visor to um, open some doors and a couple other things, but for the most part, if you don't want to read about this shit, you don't have to. Vinny, did you find out who remade the game? <laughs> nope. 
but essentially they're introducing what you get from this story-wise real early on is they're introducing this substance called Phazon into um, tanks of weird creatures and mutating them on purpose. It's hard to believe that this came out, what, like 21 years ago, almost? Crazy. Exactly 20. Vinny, no, it came out 20 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. I feel like if this was a different time for Nintendo, this would have been the focus of, of the Direct, or this would have been, like, the final announcement. Crazy, it was just some, like, you know, random announcement with a insta-drop in the middle of a Direct, starting with Pikmin and Zelda. Bum, 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 bum. I love the emergency holograms that just appear. It's like just error message pop-ups. Do you know there's definitely adware on the ship? Like, people be walking around, there's like gonna be some fucking pop-ups for, uh... Parasite enlargement pills that you get from a sewer clown. Being able to, like, look around and move and shoot is really kind of a game-changer. Ah, fellas, get out of here! We got a raid? Whoa. Uh, who, uh, who raided? Who raided? Anyone? Was that real, even? Nope, I don't think it was real. Okay, no, <laughs> one person said it, and I was like, oh. Ridley. Meta Ridley. Weapon update complete. Stinger Ballistics online. Plasma Fuel Cell online. Cerebral casing stable, exoskeleton seal holding, begin umbilical retraction. They really thought of a lot of cool names for things in this game. A, calling it Metroid Prime to start. And then B, Meta Ridley. What other cool words are there, chat? <laughs> Tubular Craid. Well, look, they actually explain how Samus loses the stuff in this one. But yeah, you lose pretty much everything. You can just basically walk, jump, and shoot. Hundreds of space pirates blown out into space. Tracking on enemy target has been lost. Ground-based recon required. Begin landing sequence. Okay, so this is where the game needed the most improvement. Just visually. It already looks good. Retro Studios did develop this, an employee posted about it on Twitter. Wow, the first retro game in 10 years. And it's Metroid Prime again. Looks pretty damn good. Again, you're gonna hear me say this a lot for the Switch. But yeah, this area needed the most amount of attention, and I think it, it looks way more natural now. When I saw this in 2002, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how did they make Metroid work in 3D? Does it make any sense? Alright, someone's gotta port this into VR chat now. This- wait, wait, wait. We also know from a LinkedIn profile of a Retro Studios employee that this remaster was finished in 2021? I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sure I would need to, um, do a little bit more research than, say, none to believe that, but... I mean, it does still beg the question, what is the deal with Metroid Prime 4? I kind of felt like that was going to be their big holiday game this year, but I, I kind of doubt it now. <laughs> Maybe at E3 we'll find out about it, chat. I hear E3 this year is being held in someone's garage. Just someone in Parsippany, New Jersey. McDonald's dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Zoomer. See, chat? Here's some of you. Gamer. Wait until you see the Coomer later on, chat. Beetle. What a name that is, huh? Original. New environment. Uh-oh. Game unplayable. Texture too low. Bad rock. Love those sci-fi noises. Um, I would say Metroid has consistently been one of my most replayed series that has the highest quality entries and I just love the sci-fi shit so much. Zelda is real close though. Other M? Yeah, well I mean that's the clear clunker of the of the group. 
But I mean, even Zelda had... Gee, I just wonder what Ganon's up to! Sorry, I don't think I'm gonna be breaking the speedrun world record for this game. Oh, that's a, an eyeball. Save point. Samus is like, wait, what do you mean save the game? This room looks nice. I mean, I'm gonna be saying that a lot, but... Like, I remember a lot of these rooms. I've played through this game probably about three or four times. Not as many as Super Metroid. But it's also, like, a good deal longer than Super Metroid. I like that they designed it so that, like... A lot of the rooms have, like, an actual lore purpose. Again, you can use ZR to shoot when you're doing the dual analog stick controls. Twin stick. And you can also, um... Kind of hold the button. So it's kind of almost set up like a shmup, in the sense that you can rapid fire without having to, like, jam on it. It depends on how you finger blast. That's really what I'm trying to say. Is that a missile launcher? You forgot to scan the missile power up. I will forget to scan other power-ups, for sure. But yeah, I can't wait for the, um, inevitable comparison videos. Because I wonder if there's any things... ...that are new, or like any rooms that were modified... ...in regards to, maybe like, some obtuse puzzles or difficulty... ...like the Dead Space remake. Well, I haven't played that yet, but that'll be in October for Spooptober. Because, I mean, I kind of only just recently played Dead Space a couple years ago, so... I'm more excited for Resident Evil 4. I mean, everything old is just what we're playing again these days. Just think of it this way, chat. You don't have to ever play a new game ever again. All you have to do is just wait for a remake of favorite game to come out. Did we actually get a raid? Oh, we got the Limes raid back! Wait, that was like instant pay it forward. I hope everyone enjoyed Limes. And, uh, thank you, Lime, for being back here and uh, directing the people. And your people. And all the- Yeah, I've been live. I basically- here's what I did. I just made some soup, like, super quick. And had the rest of a chicken cutlet. I just downloaded the game while that was happening. Because I- This is, like, one of my top games of all time. This remake... Is actually way more detailed than we all expected. Like, aside from controlling better... It looks really, really good for the Switch. And I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. Do you see the light? Uh, reflect on Samus's face. It's still one of my favorite... ...effects in video games. And this teaches you dodging. I learned. It took me a little while, but I learned. The moth ball. How you doing? I'm from Boston. But we get the moth ball in Boston. Still one of the most, like, elegant solutions. Like, how they managed to do the, the morph ball. Because they didn't really know... 100% how they were going to translate the uh, Morph Ball. Or if they were going to do a third-person Metroid game. But going between first-person and third is, like, perfect. Yeah, X-Files whistles. Mulder, it's me, Scully. There's an alien in my stomach. Uh, I thought you said aliens were a real Scully. Are you an alien? Mulder, that's my cat. Oh. Your Mulder is just a really drunk guy. Yeah. Mulder, are you fucking drunk? On the job? Always am, Scully. To me, it's kind of fucking weird, yet again, that here's this lauded game... ...one of, you know, one of the highest rated games critically of all time. The, probably the crown jewel of the, uh, Metroid series in some ways. And, um, it just got a shadow drop. Like, you would almost expect this to have some hype and, like, a special edition. Because you know there are Metroid fans, like myself, who would buy a special edition. Like I did for Dread. 
And also, you know, Dread sold really well for the Metroid series. Honestly, I was a little disappointed it didn't do better, because I felt like it could have. I think it hit, what, like 4 million copies? Three? Was it, um... Last known update is three. So you have to assume that by now it's probably gotten close to like three, five to four. God damn it, chat. So now people are saying 2.5 million. The quality of Dread is like a five million copy game, as far as I'm concerned. And even then, the fact that Pokemon can release like broken games and get like, you know, not to throw too much shade because I actually liked Pokemon um, Violet more than I expected to. I thought there was a lot of, like, good stuff in there that could have been better, but that's okay. Point being, Dread was so good, I felt like I wish more people checked it out. Maybe it was, like, not the best marketing. Maybe people just don't love Metroid as much as they should. I don't know. Dry chorizo? No, you want, like, wet chorizo. Not wet, but, like, juicy. Juicy chorizo. Like, the quickest change from... We're here, we love it here. We're gonna live with the planet to, oh fuck. There's a bunch of shit that's seeping into the crops and the milk is rotten. It really didn't take that long. It's the mitochondria. I wonder if there's an alien version of Walter White that made the blue phase on. Jessup, Jessup. They want us for an advertisement for some potato chip or some shit. All right, Mr. White, I'll do it. Apparently there's an ex-dev at Retro that said they did get Studio Self-Suck for external help with the game. <laughs> yeah! You should see the way they spelled it. It wasn't obvious enough. It really wasn't that obvious. It was really good! Somehow chat is still finding new and innovative ways to make me say this ridiculous stuff. I never say gross stuff on my streams. Oops. Lava caves. Not even what it's called, but thanks for the narration. Vinny, I have never played these games. Would you recommend? Well, as I've said, Metroid Prime... Metroid, as a series, is maybe my favorite video game series of all time. Maybe. And Prime is in my... probably my top 20 games. I know I made a list, it's probably in my top 20. So yeah, I mean, that and of course, if you haven't played Super Metroid, what the hell are you doing? You need to play Super Metroid. Hey chat, look. Hey chat, look. Chat on- Bad. Oh! Snapping vines. This is the thing from Half-Life. Reaper vine. Powerful rock-dwelling tentacle. Reaper vine is actually my streaming competition. Why is the map screen pure black now? It's not. It just dims everything. Open door. Charge beam. Charge beam. Every item I get will now be Boston item. That's the sound effect that should have occurred. I have to watch Imbruge. Earn Imbruge? The dude who directed Banshees of Inishirin. I've been meaning to check out. Earn Bruges? Imbruges? Ambrosia. I need to watch that at some point, too. Earn Brew? Uh, yeah, the Scottish soda. Yeah, that. I'm just catching up. Once in a while, like every couple days... I like to, uh... Well, for a long time I wasn't, because I just watched so much fucking YouTube. Just stuff. Just like, I don't care. It's, it's an hour-long video about... the invention of the Hot Pocket. Sure, I'll leave it on and I'll watch it. What a satisfying sound the Morph Ball makes as it rolls around on the ground. Mechanoid incinerator drone programmed for high temperature waste disposal. Forgot about this one. It, it definitely is one of the weirder bosses conceptually. It's just a flamethrower. This one teaches you friendship through intense flames under threat of peace and love. The explosion effect is different. Yeah, I was looking at that. It looks... It looks good. 
I wasn't sure how different it was, but yeah, it's pretty- it looks pretty different. It has detail. Now, if only it made the sound that Boba Fett's ship made. Did you ever see that cool movie, 12 Years of Boba Fett's Ship? Wait, is this the scummy water? Huh. Yeah, that was pretty bad, that water. Is there motion controls? There can be, if you want them. There's gyro, and, um... There's also, you can point your Joy-Con at the screen to kind of emulate the Wiimote. I like the, um, the music in this area kind of morphs and builds as you go. Like, it's an, uh, kind of an underappreciated thing I didn't notice when I was younger. There's like a, a story behind this game's sound font too, like some of the sounds that, that it uses, this whole, for the Prime series. It's like, just on some, f like, futuristic samples CD that they found. How does this compare to the San Andreas remaster? Ugh. It almost feels like the developers cared about this one. And didn't just, like, blanket AI upscale three massive open-world games. And then, like, spend the time required for each game as opposed to trying to accomplish like, massive overhauls in three giant games at the same time. And then that's- that's how they ended up running the AI algorithm to upscale the text, and that's how you got, like, bap de burtipa on one of the signs. It's poison, chat. You don't want to inhale that shit. Don't breathe this! Someone just said, God, that unlocked a memory. I mean, I don't even know where I pulled that from. Just got, like, one of those random like, flashback moments. That was a massive thing at the time, wasn't it? Will it blend? That was a really, really big... series. Did you ever see that fucking copypasta of the person who's like, if you put coins in your microwave, it'll make smaller coins. And then they just show a picture of a very, very tiny, like, penny or dime. And then the following image is just someone saying, Thanks, asshole, and it's like their microwave exploded. Note, if you put coins in your microwave, based on some random spurious post you saw on the internet, that's bad. I wasn't gonna say you were dumb or anything, I'm just gonna- that's bad. That's just bad. Uh... I tell you what, I don't see it. Still, I don't see it, I don't know where it is. That one's been activated. Then it was right there? What do you mean it was right there? I didn't see it. What, what do you mean right there? No, I believe- I believe chat knows where it is. I just don't think they can communicate effectively where it is, so I'm just blaming them. I really, really don't see it. Vinny, you just passed it. <laughs> the main door, Vin. The main door. You just passed it. I don't believe you! Then it's right there. Okay, okay, okay. It's right there, you say? I'm looking. We got that one. We got the one up there. This is a wasp. Oh. I almost got to the point where I was hoping it wouldn't even exist and that the game is just like soft lock and uh, locked and they forgot to add it. But now I have to admit that yes, that was a very easy one to find and I just didn't see it and I don't know how I didn't see it. So that's awesome. Yeah, if this was just a straight, like, port, like they did for the Wii, then I would say it should be a trilogy, absolutely. But for what they're doing here, I'm- I'm happy that this ended up being really good. Flagra. I- I honestly think they should have just called it Plantera, but that's me. Okay. I think I remember how to do this, but... There we go. Thank you, helpful camera. Music was bugged in the original version... ...for this boss. Apparently, it only played a small loop. I feel like maybe I knew about that, but... ...maybe they didn't catch it because it sounded, like, appropriate. Or maybe not appropriate, but just like it sounded accurate, or appropriate for a boss fight, yeah. The full one plays in the Wii version. Okay, I haven't played that version. Boss looks awesome, by the way. Really good new textures and model and everything. 
pretty sure it's a new model, but the textures are, are way better quality. It's a good thing Samus doesn't have to smell this. Oh man, look at those reflection graphics. Whoa. Whoa, I want that. Fire Emblem update. That exact thing should be, like, in the collector's edition. As, like, a collectible coin-sized object. Or, like, you remember the Quake Champions collector's edition, I think? That had the spinny Quake logo? Maybe you could just put that on, like, a spit and just have it rotate constantly in your home. New enemy. Pulse Bamboo. Pulse to Bamboo. Alright, I gotta hit up a save point now. Chat, this is a very good remaster. Having played a little over two hours, doing the first boss, um, really getting a feel for the game. This is exactly why I didn't stream Metroid Prime for years. Because I wanted this. Just so you can see, there have been now comparison videos and pictures. And I will say that it is way more drastic than I thought when I played it. I just picked some random one chat, some random video from this here channel. Uh, L Anal? Oh, it was cut off. It's L Analis Analista de Bits. So you can see the differences are, are way, a little bit more drastic, maybe way more drastic than you would think, because the game looks how you thought it looked. I, I'm saying you, I mean, that's what happened to me. But, yeah, no, they, they actually kind of really went all out with this. This one's crazy, like this comparison. I saw the, I mean, it, all, all of the, the holograms, all the textures, the geometry. This might be one of the best remasters or remakes Nintendo has ever released. And yet they shadow dropped it. And they charged 40 bucks for it. Where Skyward Sword... Skyward Sword was just Skyward Sword again. With some control options and resolution. But they charged full price for that. And yes, Retro did it, but they apparently had help from some outside studios. Anyway, I'll just play the game now. There's a couple assets that are gonna probably piss some people off regardless, but I think it's cool that so much of this got, like, handcrafted detail. Do you recommend playing this over the original for a first-time playthrough? abso fucking lootly Like, undoubtedly... Yeah, don't even think twice, yes. This is the way you could play this game, and, and you still get the original feel of the game. I mean, I, I'm only two hours in, but... I'm getting everything I wanted out of this. I'm kind of at the point now, chat, where I, I think that... Metroid Prime 4... ...is gonna be on Switch 2, or whatever. Like, I don't think Prime 4 is gonna be releasing on the Switch. I think we're gonna get... ...Prime 2 later this year, Prime 3 next year... ...or... ...even just one... ...just one a year. And then, you know, the Switch 2 will come out, and then Prime 4 will be on that. And it'll be like, um... Like how Prime was kind of early in the GameCube's lifespan, it'll be something like that. Stink. This is just the fucking... the virus. <laughs> Let's see, the doors have gotten some flack. I mean, they don't look terrible. I don't know what's different about them. Speed! I'm just gonna enjoy troiding. You know, just enjoying my time with the game, soaking it all in. Because until Metroid Prime 2 Echoes Remastered, this is the Metroid game that we have right now. So it makes me wonder if, uh, if they could even make that game without 
having the motion control option be the, the primary option. And I think they could, they'd just have to like, you know, spend more time on that. And like, realistically and logistically try to rethink some of the, uh, oh! Oh! What were you thinking? I don't know, I lost my train of thought. Weirdly enough. So this is where the jump gets you an extra E-Tank early. This one's easy with the spring ball. Yes, it is. More nerfs the danger. Yeah, but that's also the fun of Metroid, is becoming overpowered. It's true, though. That's part of um, the, the, the kind of design choice of this type of game. I think Dread was perfect because it was difficult all the way through the end. We all love the Fendrana Drifts. The music. It looks awesome. And now it looks even better. I mean, this is wizardry for the Nintendo Switch. Oh, man. Water go ripple. It's funny because you really feel like him when you play this game, chat. The robot, Samus Aran. I'm just kidding, chat. His name is Metroid. I'm telling you, if I was live on stage right now, that would have gotten a lot of laughs. Like, oh man. Oh man. You wouldn't even be able to hear the next joke. Because... Save point. Vinny, I have done stand-up. I think you would do well. I don't- I don't think I would be a great stand-up. I've always secretly wanted to do stand-up, but I am way too stage fright- frightatious. And I'm also way too lazy to come up with- with material. I love this music. Makes me feel cold, says a chat member. I'm already cold, because it's just, like, cold. <laughs> but yeah. I'm still, to this day, just really blown away by the accomplishment of turning Metroid into a 3D game and not losing what made Metroid, Metroid. Playing it and trying to remember what it was like playing it for the first time. It's really cool. And I'm not just talking about Fendrana Drifts. You would think Metroid would just automatically qualify as a third-person game so you could see Samus and run around and stuff. And I think it could work. Fuck you very much, Other M. Someone said Other M was fine. Fine, yes, fine, at best. I'll give you fine at best. That's my asterisk to that. That's bait? I don't think fine is bait. That's, just, that's, that's how divisive that game is, though. Someone can say it's fine and, and like, people want to, like, jump them. I, but I kind of feel like it could work. I, I can't think of an example of another game series that could handle, or that would um, compare to Metroid that's third person. Maybe you can, chat? I'm talking like a third-person 3D action exploration game. Mario? <laughs> Alright, never mind, this is not working. Tomb Raider? Ugh. Really? This is way too overly specific. I know, I'm starting to regret this. Chat, can we blame Tony Hawk for this? He did invent half-pipes, that's what I'm saying. Tony Hawk invented half-pipes. If it weren't for him, and if it weren't for his horse, we wouldn't have had half-pipes in Metroid Prime. When's the new season of Vinesaw starting? Depends on what game I get addicted to next. Zelda? We've had Zelda already. I guess Zelda 2. The new batch. Fucking turrets. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, good. What? What am I even looking at? Do you remember when um, Metroid Prime Two Echoes launched the same time as Halo Two, and then people started comparing them, even though they're completely different games? Oh boy, I remember that. Metroid Prime Two had multiplayer. And it was the most basic shit ever, and you just locked on. I played it like three times because no one wanted to play it with me. <laughs> Everyone else was busy playing Halo. You know what would be great games to get modernized controls? Kid Icarus Uprising, Metroid Prime Hunters, and hear me out on this one Mario 64 DS. For some reason, there were people that did not believe me, that the controls were different. But the characters have a different, like, physics to them. So even if you mod in analog controls, which you can, and they're better, but the characters still kind of move around like they have a dumpy. Mario 65 isn't real, and no amount of glue eating will make it real, chat member, I'm sorry to tell you. Dumb plant. And we have looped back around. Here we are yet again. This heroic music. It's just so good. And sometimes it's nice to just have a character that's a hero. You know? Like, Samus deserves this music. Even though she's a bounty hunter. <laughs> that never does any bounties. If you look up at the rain, the rain goes down your arm cannon. Well, that's um, an effect I don't believe was in the original Prime, was the rain interacting with the cannon. Oh, look at that. Look at it slides off the cannon. Like, depending on your angle. I'm just so happy Metroid is alive and well. It's looking kind of grim there. Situation looking pretty grim! Game was like, okay. Uh, Alright, the player is walking in circles. I wanted to follow up. I, I finished Nightcrawler. And... That movie is fucked. So here's what I'm gonna say about it. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think Jilly Hilly's uh, performance is incredible. But the movie is very uncomfortable. And hits kind of close to home just in current year. Like, considering how the, the media, the news, is just so bloodthirsty. Boot! This is the uh, place above the impact site. And that brings us to the weakest aspect of the game, in my opinion. Which is the artifact fetch quest. It doesn't really detract from the game enough for me to, like, lower this from, like, a 10. You know, I might be biased. Chat, two years ago, we were playing Animal Crossing. In pajamas. All day. Oh, that's three years. Oh my god. Chat, the icon of the, um, the beams. Is that Samus's hand position? It's the showstopper. <laughs> Why does it have a name? You can see her actual hand change configurations in the x-ray visor. I feel like I might have known that many a year ago. Part of the fun of the Metroidvania genre is going back to an old area with new items. I mean, it's not just part of the fun, it's a fucking core tenet of the genre. Chad, do you remember when I played Metroid Prime 2 and then they announced a, a game? Was it Dread? Or was it Prime 4? It was Prime 4. Wow, that was a lot. That was a lot of years ago. Yeah, fit in that hole. What? What's wrong, chat? Is that not literally what just happened? I just wanna... I should probably memorize the landmarks a little bit, so that way I know how to go to that area without having to open the map every two seconds. But if you've ever seen me play a video game before, then you know that 
if the video game gives me a map, I'm opening it too much. You know what Metroid Prime 4 needs? Space credits. Samus is a bounty hunter. I know it's in the loosest sense of the word, someone said the Japanese sense of the word even, but... Complete bounties, I guess the problem with that is it would just become like almost every other game. Chad, are they gonna do an open world Metroid? No Metroid Sky of the Wild. At that point, don't even call it Metroid Prime. Call it... Metroid Spagublio. They've tried a couple different things. There was even a Metroid Prime pinball game at one point. As I'm sure some of you remember, as it is the best Metroid game. Get it, cock! That's the sound of, of uh, Dom transforming into a spacecraft. I offer you ball. Mando got a lightsaber, that's true. Mando Calrissian actually is getting a darksaber. Now that the show is, like, almost back, I still feel... I really wish they would have drawn out... ...him separated from the child... ...for, like, a full season... ...or two. <laughs> it, it, they, they brought it back in a side show. In a different show. In, like, two episodes, they wrapped that up. Like, what?! Well, I still have hope for the show, though. I'm, I'm sure it'll be entertaining. I look at Mando more as, like, an enjoyment. Like, just... ...enjoy the, the, the Star Wars... Andor actually made me fucking think. And, uh, ooh, it even gave me an emotion, if you could believe it. But Mando, I'm just gonna enjoy. I'm just gonna, like, watch it and, and just take it in my veins and just say, Alright, he's killing things now with a lightsaber. I'm happy if, about that. That's, that's cool. The soft underbelly of a Shigoth is susceptible to concussive blasts. In battle, they expel blasts of frigid gas to ensnare their targets. They are also fond of ramming and trampling their hapless prey. I mean, I read it, I just need to enact it now. Bombs equal concussive hit the belly. Oh, yeah. That would have been cool to see, wouldn't it? Have been. I could have used the bombs. Oops. It even told me to use them. Are you a hands-on, audio, visual, or focus type of learner? I don't know. Um, I learn usually through just sheer blunt force trauma. And even then, maybe sometimes I don't. If you um, believe in them horror scopes, I am a Taurus, so I'm very stubborn. I don't know if I believe any of that shit. Anyway, I am a Taurus, the most philosophical of all. <laughs> Did you ever hear Jim Morrison deliver that? Probably not. There's like a speech he delivers about how he's like, Anyone here a Sagittarius? Because I'm- I'm a Sagittarius, the most philosophical of all the star signs. And someone in the audience is like, Me too, Jim! Me too! Oh yeah, I love- I love the horoscope, Jim! And he goes, well anyway, that's a bunch of bullshit and I don't believe in it. And then the person in the audience is like, I never believed it, Jim! I don't believe it either, Jim! I mean, there's definitely some... some stuff in here that is related to how I was brought up, and... The disposition of my parents, and you know, I went to a pretty strict Catholic school with some of the most scraggly, dry, like I, I, I would say soulless, but probably not soulless. That might be a little too far. Um, cantankerous, nasty. Not nice people. They, I had some some teachers that were extremely, extremely. They they were like. Uh, how do I explain this? Yeah, nuns. Some of them were nuns or ex nuns. They were. They were the type of people that you almost didn't want to believe the things they were teaching you because you hated them. And I'm not alone in saying that. 
I had um, a lot of classmates, like we just hated a lot of our teachers in grade school. And I think because of that, and because I had to go, kind of go through that for years before I had teachers that I liked, and like disciplinarian, you know, and like, hey, chat, I'm not that far off from a lot of you age-wise, even if it seems like I am. I'm not, you know, I'm not like 70, but they were smacking our fucking knuckles with rulers. They were pulling our hair. Like, that happened. That was the tail end of the 80s. And it wasn't like I was, you know, like, suffering or anything. I'm not claiming to be some kind of victim. I had a lot of luck, and I had a lot of, like, good things in my life, too. What I'm trying to say, though, is that was not really frowned upon up until, like, the early 90s. So I had a little bit of that. And it changed the way I learned, and it changed how I wanted to learn, and it made me kind of despise teachers. Later on, I had some good ones. High school, I had some good and some awful ones. I mean, it was a crapshoot. I mean, but that's the thing, though. A teacher, too, you gotta feel a little bit of sympathy for them, because these are also just, like, broken human beings. And you, you don't really know what they go through in their life, and they bring it to the classroom sometimes, and it sucks. They're just... doing their best, and some of them are... not handling it in the right way, or because of the fact that I went to a religious school. They handled it in the way that they were taught, which is... you know... Old Testament. But, um, so, okay, I don't know how that all came from that one question in chat, but the point I'm trying to make is I'm a stubborn learner, and I have problems with authority. That, and I'm also just an asshole. Now, hang on, let me explain. I can't drop all of the responsibility on my teachers and parents and upbringing. No, because you... <laughs> There's a certain point where you have to take responsibility for your for yourself and your own fuck-ups and actions. And that's hard. And it's hard to admit and it's hard to do. So you 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 go and you do you do that. But I mean, you know, you you do you. Not gonna stop you. Um you know. Only you can know yourself. You know who said that? Mr. Skok from Starcock. You know, chat, this was supposed to be a video game stream where I talked about Metroid, and it turned into this. I don't know how. Um, I hope you don't mind that it did. Now you know a little bit about me. You still don't really know that much, but that's the point. You don't, you know, we're all different people, and that's okay. But I'm happy I could give you a little insight into who Streamer is. Um, and I'll tell you what, I appreciate what I do for a living. I'm happy I got here. I love it. And I'm... this is great. I mean... I was talking over a Nintendo Direct yesterday. 14,000 people were watching. Are you kidding me? What is that? It's not real. It's pretty cool, though. Looks so good, chat. It looks so good. Last time I played this, I was stuck on a bit of a life rant, which people were uh, kind enough to listen to for some reason and uh, as a result I wandered well past where I was supposed to be but no I, I appreciate people listening to that it was, it was honest you know but I would uh, venture a guess that many of you aren't here for that kind of talk about just you know real life shit on a daily basis. And I'm not the type of streamer to deliver such things. Um... This goes to Magmore. This goes to Talon Overworld. Yeah, I really- I fucked it, didn't I? So I watched a couple videos about this, and uh, Digital Foundry loved this remaster. 
<clears throat> and talked about how, like, actually technically impressive it is. But now that the dust has settled a bit, and this has been out for a little while, and people have clearly finished the game, I think it's been really interesting to see the reactions people have had to this game, playing it for the first time, and like, I've seen a lot of people say, holy shit, how is this game so good? Not everyone, but it seems like there's been a, a large quantity of people who have discovered this for the first time as a result of this remaster, and I couldn't be happier. There's a rumor, and again, it's really not substantiated in any way, that they're not going to be giving a similar treatment to Prime 2 and 3. Which, honestly, Prime 2 would look incredible. Some of those environments, like the city, the, the sky shit, would be amazing with this level of detail. If they gave this treatment to 2, and then just gave a couple of, like, touch-ups to 3, I would be happy with that. If we're talking about games from this era that I would love to see, like, remade with this level of attention, Eternal Darkness, Metroid Prime 2, and Skies of Arcadia. I thought I had to go all the way back to Talon Overworld to use this. That's what I, I thought, like, I saw there was a purple door, but apparently I need to use this in Fendrana. It would be really cool to die before I get to Fendrana Drift, wouldn't it? Does Wave Beam completely outclass Normal Beam? Nope. The beams in this game don't really... ...work the same way as in other Metroid games. Each one kind of has a purpose. I think this is more powerful... ...on some enemies. Like, each beam has, has different enemies that it's more powerful against. But you'll notice this has a triple shot, but goes slower. So you can't, like, mash. My eyes are playing a trick on me. Why can't I see this from above? Oh, that is above. Oh man, I just had like a weird optical illusion thing happen there. All right. When I saw it, you know, you probably, many of you are probably here for the Nintendo Direct. Like for a little while, I wasn't even sure how much was actually done. Like I, I thought maybe, oh, okay, some extra model work and maybe some like textures up resed. Because it just looked, the art style remained so similar. It just looked how I thought the game still looked in my head. Which is a very real thing. That's almost like an overused adage at this point, but it's it's actually really true. I'm also, I think I'm gonna pick up the physical version. And to justify it, I'm gonna let one of my friends borrow it. And then when he's done, give it back to me. So I'm, I'm like justifying it as if like it's a gift, but only just so he can play it. Cause he's, he, his only Metroid that he played was Dread, which I also let him borrow. And I want him to understand why I'm, like, a nut about Metroid. The problem is, if you play Dread before Super Metroid, when you go to Super Metroid, story-wise, you're gonna be lost. So I'm gonna say... If you st Here's, uh, my suggested order, and maybe this isn't a great suggested order, but I'm gonna do my best. Okay. You played Prime, you really enjoyed it, you're looking for more Metroid. Play Super Metroid next, because it's the most familiar, like, to Metroid Prime. Then play Fusion, and then play Dread, all of which are now on the Switch. See, because I think, um, Zero Mission's a great starting point, too, because it is just Metroid 1, but with better mechanics. I love, uh, Zero Mission, I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, it was Poggin. It's a weird order. You can- honestly, you can play them even if you start with Dread. Like, that's not a bad start either. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, but in terms of mechanics, Super Metroid is still good, but feels the most dated. And I think it's a good one to start with, so that way you're just progressing along with the series itself. Them's look like Metroids. You know, the namesake of the game. 
Oh shit! Did you ever try the VR mod for this? I did. I streamed it, actually. It was not great at the time of me streaming it. In fact, it was it was kind of awful. But, you know, I tried it. If Command's predictions are half true, we shall rise to dominance in this sector within a Deca cycle. Truly, these are glorious times. Truly, Captain, these are glorious times. What is a Deca cycle? What the fuck is a Deca cycle? I'll tell you what it is. Space years. Vinny, aren't there any other scenes from TNG you could reference besides the same one you do every time? That's a weird compl- that's a, like a- a really, like, specific complaint. Yeah... I kinda wish that, like in old games, when you open a door, it would just turn into a regular door. Like, I don't want to have to keep switching to the wave beam because I actually don't really enjoy using this weapon all that much. That's my Metroid Prime nitpick. Why do doors in the Metroid universe open by shooting them? It is a universe that has evolved through extreme violence. Flying pirate. Pirates trained and equipped for airborne assault. Flying pirates are extremely agile in the air, but the heat signatures of their jetpacks can be tracked with thermal imaging. While their missiles are extremely potent, their jetpacks can even be more so. Can be even more so. If their pack fails, they will make a suicide strike. Oh! Oh man, I just obliterated that one with a super missile. Someone said, hot take, the map in this game is atrocious. Well, as a Metroid enjoyer, and as a staunch Metroid Prime defender, I would have to agree, actually. I wouldn't call it atrocious, it's it's doable. The problem is, it's just been done better by now. And at the time, it was pretty... I remember people fawning over it. Metroids look so round. Oh, there's only one. But they're so cute! Oh shit. Man, the, the lighting on that glass looks pretty goddamn good. It's a different strain of, of creature? They are. These are, um, Ice Beetle. Their carapace is reinforced with ice. They've adapted to life here and stuff. And they're resilient and have, you know... Big... Sacks. I'm gonna, like, ruin that pirate's life. By ending that pirate's life. What a smart idea it was to implement visors into this game. Just so many really... Like, forward-thinking, clever ideas to bring you into this world. I mean, it does make sense when you think of it. Like, when, I guess once you start with... Wouldn't it be great to see out of Samus's helmet? It's like, well, how cool would it be if you could change the visor on Samus's helmet? And then it just becomes a core gameplay mechanic. What rank job do you think Samus would be in Starfleet? I think security officer. I mean, Other M kind of sadly explored that a little bit, and then you could just see she just follows orders blindly. From some dumbass. But I just go ahead and wipe, you know, I, I wipe that from my, my ass. So I don't even like to think about that. That game's not even canon to me as far as I'm concerned. Is this blurrier? Hmm. I see what they were going for. I don't think I'm all that into it. There's a ton of motion blur. Yeah, that would have been a nice option to be able to turn off thermal imaging motion blur. Um, also, the heat on the gun, the more you fire. I just like that it heats up and then cools down. Why does this thermal visor make weird noises? Like, yep, yep, yarrow, yep, 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 yarrow. It goes, yum, 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 yum. That's what heat sounds like? Oh, I see. This is something I feel is a bit of a downgrade. 
here you go. And Digital Foundry called this out too. In the original game, even though the lighting was sometimes a little fucked up, these casts, like, not cast, but these actually had more light sources. The beams. I hate to bring up sad things, but I, I wanted to mention something. Um, and I'm not talking about Eddie Murphy's music career. But... It reminded me, thinking of Eddie Murphy's album... Bruce Willis also had an album. Like... It just seemed like a lot of these A-listers in the 80s also tried to do music careers. And they were, like, very cheesy. But, um... Yeah, Bruce Willis uh, confirmed dementia. And it's heartbreaking. It just sucks. It's, like, really sad. And you know what? All those awful movies that he made... No one's gonna remember those. It doesn't matter. If he was looking to make some money for his family, that makes perfect sense. But... He will be remembered... ...for Fifth Element, Die Hard, Pulp Fiction... Unbreakable. I'm, I said this already during another thing, but that dude had some 12 monkeys. He was a really interesting leading man, and I say was just because he can't really act anymore now, but... He's one of those, like... ...weird action hero type dudes... ...that ended up taking a lot of really, like, strange roles that he excelled at. And he was like a very personable kind of, like, muscle butt. Which made Die Hard work, because he's, he really kind of did act like everyday, just random schlub from, you know, New York. I don't know anything about the guy's personal life, but I do know that he's a good actor, and I've liked a lot of the movies he's been in. And that dementia fucking sucks. So, not really much else to say other than just appreciate every moment that you have with the people that you care about. I try to... When I, when I see stuff like that, I'm like, I should just enjoy what I do have and be grateful of the the people that understand. But I think there is, a, like, definitely a silver lining to stories like that. And also, especially when you have someone who left behind that much work for people to continue to remember him by. Like, people are going to be watching Die Hard every year. Someone said, Vinny, I grew up watching you. It'll be sad when you get old. <laughs> Too late. Don't worry, AI, Vinny. We'll be perfected by then. Yeah, I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon, though. Don't worry about that. So you're gonna get this bad content for many more years to come. And so shall I. I forget the name of this boss. Is it, like, Rock Coculus or something? Who's wild? Oh, I was close. It's Thardis. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, super missiles. Oh, I'm almost out of missiles. I didn't, I didn't realize I was that fucking careless. <sighs> Come on. Got this. I got this. Just a little bit more. Even if I don't have missiles, I can still do this. Ooh, that was gonna be the kill shot. That was the kill shot. Yeah, the phase on is just that mitochondria. Now I can spide. Oh, I should probably stop playing this. It's 1:30. Um, you know what? I will. That's a good stopping point. Anyway, chat, thanks for watching. Chat, for a second, I thought that that noise in the beginning was that Adobe Enhance stuff. Crazy. Since it is the first 30 seconds of this here stream slash video, we're gonna be just like God's children, as Twitch intended. Well, not Twitch, but YouTube more. Actually, only YouTube. Even though, now that, um, the CEO is gone, and they're probably gonna get a worse CEO. 
you know, enjoy YouTube while it's still... Whatever it is. I don't know what it is. I'm for NFTs! Oh. Boy, we, we've talked about a lot so far, and we haven't even started the game yet. Vinny, when's Pizza Tower? Whoa, that was crusty. Um, the answer... The, the, the answer is, um, after this. Welcome back, though. Um, Metroid is good. And, uh, let me just... The volume got a little scummy. Oh, yeah! Oh, boy, are we in technical problem mode today, chat? I think today is a technical problem stream. I should be playing this on a fucking CRT TV. That's the only true way to be, like, a real gamer. Yeah, oh, eat shit! Oh, Chad, I went to the uh, Natural History Museum the other day because the, si the Parasite Eve uh, inspired me to do so. Not very accurate. The game is not accurate. You know what? The museum isn't accurate to the game. There were no crates, there were no guns, there were no... like, slimy mitochondria monsters. Mitochondria was said 112 times during the Parasite Eve stream. If that's right... Damn, it's a lot of one word. Some of these specific rooms are starting to, like, really... ...come back to me, the closer I get to them. Like, the first half of Magmore isn't, for me, as ingrained in my memory as this half, or this part. Oh, because I've been here already. No wonder. That explains it. Can I be paid in Redvox merch? Uh... No. No, because I'm not the one who has the Redvox merch to give. That's our fifth band member, Sam. Sam Vox. Vinny, I thought you made it yourself. Yeah, I, I, I make the Red Vox merch myself. I make all the vinyls by hand. Like, I press them like I make it a pizza. I do, like, the dough flipping, but it's it's vinyl records. Chozo ruins for progress, got it. But, um, yeah, people, people like vinyl these days. It, it finally happened. When we started making vinyl, it wasn't nearly as much of a market as it is now. To me, there's a lot of hope, like, even when stuff gets very... Like, music is just a cheap commodity at this point. You can just get it on YouTube. Like, you can get music from... Like, all you have to do is put a little bit of aluminum foil on your teeth, and you'll get music for free. Music is, like, the commodity that is most easily available, easily downloadable, easily listenable. And the fact that the vinyl record industry is... Like, soaring at the moment is proof that people just like a thing, like a real thing that they can hold, that they can play, they can put on their shelf, whatever. And a way to actually support an artist they like. Yum, 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 yum. Aren't all shows fundamentally about some dude? Yeah, but some dudes are more entertaining and interesting than other dudes. Fish! They actually move away when you get close to them. Next gen mechanic. Oh, there, I wanted to mention. I also rewatched Die Hard with a Vengeance because I don't know. I've been in the mood to watch Bruce Willis stuff. Great movie. I mean, I hadn't seen it in like 15, 20 years, but I remember watching it a lot when it was on uh, HBO, and it, it's like the second best Die Hard. And to me, it's it's pretty close to Die Hard One. And all the New York City stuff is great. Jeremy Irons is fantastic, especially when he does the American accent. Holy Toledo! There seems to be a lot of damage here. Something like that. Feels like John McClane, and not a superhero yet. Like in subsequent Die Hard movies, where he just becomes like a fucking, like, killing machine. And, and can live. May as well call the next couple Die Hard movies Live Hard. God damn it. Oh man, little bastards. Some of the, um... Some of the practical stunts in Die Hard with a Vengeance are absolutely insane. Like, there's a lot of stuff that they did in that movie that, even watching today, I'm, like, almost 30 years later, I'm like, no shit. They did that? Love that stuff. Like I said, Tom Cruise is just gonna, like, self-suck in the next Mission Impossible movie, and everyone's gonna go see it and give him, like, a million dollars. Tom Cruise, did you actually self-suck for the new movie? And then he's just gonna say, yeah, you know, I did. I really did. 
But remember when there was a Metroid movie? Always in the works, there was always a Metroid movie. I remember hearing about a Metroid movie since, like, just before Metroid Prime came out. There was always talk about it, but yeah, it never really, never materialized. I would say a Metroid movie would be a very, very difficult thing. But to me, The Mandalorian almost proves that you can kind of do it, especially the first couple episodes of The Mandalorian. I mean, just look at the Halo show. Easy joke, I'm sorry, everybody. I don't, I don't mean to further upset Halo fr fans. But what do you do for Metroid? I mean, you don't do Other M. The Babby. The Babby, the Babby. This would be my pitch for a Metroid show. Okay, it's similar to the first couple ep episodes of The Mandalorian. Samus can take off her helmet. Why not? She's not a monk. But at the same time, you know, if she's on an alien world, she could leave it on. Because, you know, she wants to live. <laughs> and you can still have body language be emotive and expressive. And, again, worked for fucking Mandalorian. You start it as she's just a bounty hunter. Like, you start it in the middle of a, a bounty. She's collecting a bounty. She's killing a space pirate's grob cop. And Zgrobkob is the first 10 minutes of the episode. The next 20 minutes, she gets embroiled in some more bounties, and you learn about the world a little bit. And she does a couple more bounties, and then maybe, like, halfway through the season, or at the end of the season, she learns about the Metroid stuff. And it's the beginning of Metroid 1. She goes to Zebes. Zebs. Zebez. Zebeth. Who would you cast as Samus? Um... I mean, if it was... I don't know, um... John Krasinski's wife did a really good job in Edge of Tomorrow. Emily Blunt? I- I really genuinely could not remember her name. And I just remembered that she was married to Jim from The Office. Sorry. Elizabeth DeBecky? Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Who? She was in Tenet. She's tall, uh, blonde girl. She's great. Really good actor, too. And she looks the part, and she's tall. Hell yeah. Thank you, Chozo statue. I mean, you could also have, in, in the Metroid show, like, you could have tertiary characters. It doesn't have to be Other M if you bring in the Federation. Oh, me and Jeff got a chance to hang out yesterday. We had Ash Juice at the Double Down, where me and Joel and Mike had Ash Juice. And I told Joe about this today. He was like, y you didn't have to do that. I'm like, why? What do you mean? He's like... And then, like, me and Mike were like, no, you, you can, you have to get the Ash Juice when you're at the Double Down Saloon. And, um, he's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. All it is is just, like, like, very sugary sweet drink with novelty name. That's all it is. I- listen, I know that those are finger shapes, but do you think Samus has to hold her fingers like that the entire time she's in the beam? Because... That's not fun. Oh, eat shit. I will- yep, every stone toad will eat. Toad licks you. <laughs> We the best music! Did you see DJ Khaled at some event trying to get the audience to participate and no one was interested? They were just talking over him. All he was doing was he was on stage and he was just shouting. And then he was like, I can't hear you! I can't hear you! I, do, I really just don't know how some people are actually famous, myself included, but especially DJ Khaled. That, that to me, that's like a, a different kind of mass psychosis event that we just don't, haven't studied yet collectively. I know it's um, probably not healthy. And I, I, some of us have this for different types of people. Help people have it for me. But there's a schadenfreude to it where I just really enjoy watching DJ Khaled fail. Like... I don't feel that way about a lot of people on this planet. I try not to. But... There's just something extra special about DJ Khaled. That... It just... Seeing people ignore him... Is just chef's kiss. Vinny in his toxic era. <laughs> yeah, chat, I don't, I don't know how to actually get back up there. Just jump from where those dudes flew from? Is chat giving me terrible advice? I mean, I should know. I played this game like three times, but I really... I really don't remember a lot of it. 
Okay, so we'll go to Fendrana Drifts now. I just have to plot a course. Well, we will make it so. Plot a course for intercourse number one. Remember when Riker made him buy a Horgon? Yeah, I remember that. H-O-R-G-O-N, by the way. Someone just said the sinister metronome is back. The loathsome dung eater. Oh, you motherfucker! Chat, do you know what just happened? His big booty thump. That, right there, actually lifts you off the ground. Did you see the, um, Mega Man X Minecraft crossover? It's the weirdest fucking crossover. I swear, like... Was anyone asking for that? There was a Spongebob one. Yeah, but Spongebob is still, like, a relevant thing for a lot of people, you know? Like, Spongebob is huge. Mega Man... Mega Man, in and of itself, is not the most popular IP at the moment, but Mega Man X in particular is a really, really weird one. Would be popular if they made games. I, oh no, I, I agree. I would love to see more Mega Man of any kind. New Super Luigi and Mega Man U. In my mind, though, Metroid and Mega Man were comp competition. Because they both had arm cannons. What was I saying, chat? I was saying something. The gel rings, yeah, they're just good. They're just like chocolate-covered jelly rings, I don't know. Really bad indigestion, but worth. No one knows what you're talking about. Yeah, they... Really? Chocolate and jelly is gross. Do you... But you never had this. Is this a New York thing? I think it might be, like the black and white cookie. You guys know about black and white cookie? They're really good. They might be a New York thing, but it's not like... It's not jelly like... You're eating a jelly donut. It's like gelatin. Listen, I watched Lower Decks because Ross was, like, adamant I should watch it. And I liked a lot of it. It was actually... The Star trek -iest Star Trek has been in years, weirdly enough. But, um... You know, I just don't care anymore, really. Like, if it's good, it's good. I'll watch it if it's good. But I I'm not gonna start from episode one and then find out that, like... Picard turns into a dog because he's already a robot at this point in time so if he if he like just becomes a dog he's what yeah he's he's a robot see he he um he died in in season one and they just implanted him into the same age version of himself with the same like old so he'll, he'll just like die of old age nothing's different Mind you, it was just a convenient plot device to kill him and make you cry crocodile tears, and then they could bring him back instantly. Which is the old Obi-Wan show uh, trick, if you remember that show. How, like, they just kept stabbing people and killing them, and they came back to life like 10 minutes later. Yes, here it is, chat. Yes! The only thing I don't like about the gravity suit is that I love the way the various suit colors look so much. Like, the shiny gold is just great. Hell yeah. Gravity suit. You know what else I like about it? You can actually see underwater now. I love the very light chromatic aberrations that it has underwater. It still looks like you're underwater, but it's... It's also very, um... Cool looking and visible. The easy comparison, you know, when, when looking at this visually, because this just continues to look great. And it looks like a Switch 1.5 title or something. But... An easy comparison is Pokémon. But I don't think that would be fair. Metroid Prime looked great on the GameCube as well. And I think a big part of that is that it's just like self-contained rooms and not an open world. And as such, you can fit more detail into these small rooms and make it look good and run at 60. Now, that is the only time I will defend Pokemon Violet and Scarlet's graphics, because that game looks like hot dog shit on a, on a cold day, which is impressive. How is Nortz these days? Did you spell Nortz with a Z? Is that like the gorilla's version of it? 
I, um... I'm really proud of him, because he had an article written. We got an article written about, uh, Forgetter. And they described him as a famous actor. I don't know who wrote that article. But, they knew what was up. Well, the first part of the article, <clears throat> I don't know who wrote that, but they said Psych Kissed New York City Band. That's a really weird way to say that, but alright. However, the part is, that I like is, Famous actor Nortz loved the first half of the double album and reached out to us saying that he'd love to star in a future music video if we made one. When we wrote Forgetter, we felt like it'd be a perfect fit. Nortz is the strong, silent type. Ever stoic, he shows up on time, does his job, and returns to his trailer. We're not sure what he does in there, but a steady stream of mysterious vapor always seems to escape from the windows. While Nortz doesn't describe himself as a method actor, he certainly didn't remember a whole lot after these trailer sessions, making him perfect for the role. For the video, we told him to explore our native Staten Island at his own discretion, and followed him around with a camera as he did so. Barring a surprise visit from what we can only assume was a friend of his, the shoot went well and we're Happy with the results. Nortz remains missing to this day. Samus' ship looks like Knuckles. No, it doesn't. It looks like Samus' helmet. Is that the height of narcissism? Like... Flying around in a ship that looks like you? It feels so good to come back here with the gravity suit. It's like one of the best feelings in video games is playing a Metroid game or a Metroid-like game where you finally have the item that makes the area both possible and, like, easier to move around. What would you do if you had a Babby Metroid? Would you hand it over to Nortz? If I had a Metroid, I'd just let it slurp. Just whatever it wanted to zap energy from whoever, whatever. I just, like. What? Oh, that was a poor choice of words. Um. I, I just meant, like. I wouldn't try to stop it from being a Metroid. Like, just, like, let it be a Metroid, you know? But I think I said that kind of weird. Vinny, do you use toothpaste? Are you from, like, Germa's chat? I know you're here a lot, but, like, that's, like, the dude who came from Germus Chat that was asking about oil. Like, do you like oil, Vinny? Like, I swear to God, Germa has, like, some of the most... ...strange chat members. But they're, like, usually harmlessly strange. Listen, I know it's the internet, and fucking God knows that's not always the case. But... That, like, random dude that came in that was like, yeah, do you like oil? Like, I, I love oil. Just, like, things that you can do with oil and use. And, like, you can cook with it and use it in your vehicle. And I'm like... It's, it's like a real person. It's like a, an AI at the other end of the computer monitor. Anyway, uh, I don't use toothpaste. I use dog shit. <laughs> like, I listen, okay, I may not have a chat member that comes in here and is like, Hey, Vinny, do you like oil? But I have chat members who are like, hey, hmm, I wonder if I can get Vinny to say self-suck today. Oh man, I really gotta be using that thermal. What a clever mechanic this is, too. Like, I don't think I've ever really seen that done the same way in other games. Aside from the Prime series. Therm it up. Remember Therm Scissor Punch? When the Solo movie was announced, they promoted it with, like, an image of... Like a lobster claw, like pistol a uh, pistol shrimp type alien dude who's called Therm Scissor Punch. And like he was in the solo movie for like mm, three minutes. Uh, what, three minutes, three seconds, three se if that. Yeah, Therm Scissor Punch was real. They even like released a toy, but then you watch the movie and you think maybe Therm is gonna be like a, a like an actual like supporting character. He's like, hey, solo! Brr, is that the Millennium Falcon? It's like, and then Solo's like, hey, Therm, I need you to go punch that guy. And then he just, like, fucking rips someone in half with his pistol shrimp punching abilities. And, and, no. No. Not at all. Anyway, Aquadrone. Aquadrone? Aquasack. Aquasack. I watched this streamer named Vinesauce. He's very funny. 
talk about toothpick and dog shit. And then make dad joke. So the previous part of this was Metroid Prime Remastered Part 4. Not to be confused with Metroid Prime 4, which as we all know does not exist. Chozo ruins. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. Because man, the Metroid Prime I grew up with sure didn't have that. I, I distinctly remember getting my first job when Metroid Prime came out, which was just at KB Toys Seasonal Help. <laughs> for a Black Friday. And boy, was that a nightmare. I got a... The cool thing about it is, I got a Metroid Prime lanyard that they gave out to the people that worked at the store, and I was like, felt like the coolest motherfucker on the planet because I had one of those. Exclusive lanyard. Uh, chat. Progress is... Where, exactly? Phase on Mines. Oh, right, you know what? Remember when I started? And I was like, oh, I'll just go to the Phase on Mines. Please just, you're, you're gonna have to toss me. Once again, I am begging you to stop fucking up the half pipe. The chat, when you get sucked by a Metroid, do you have to apply Metroid cream? Ah, yes, apply the gel, of course, yes. Lieutenant Chapal, would you like to apply the gel? So it turns out these dumb assholes love Phazon because it makes their testicles 30% bigger. However, their sperms have teeth. Like the shield graphics in this game. In the remaster specifically, I mean. Do you like the name Space Pirate, or do you think it's goofy? I think it's goofy, but I kind of like it. I mean, think about the amount of things that were done very quickly with little thought put into it, because it was an NES game, and it just stuck. That doesn't answer your question, but my answer is... I like it. It is goofy, but I like it. Chat, I'm really... I don't think I'm gonna make that speed run time. I'd say the Prime games, I remember, um, even when you get all the energy tanks, I kind of remember those having some pretty, pretty good difficulty spikes towards the end. Oh shit! They actually scared me a little bit. Wave Trooper, Space Pirate armed with Wave Beam technology. Space Pirates have reverse engineered several of your weapons, including the Wave Beam. A flaw in the design makes these pirates vulnerable to their own beam weapon system. Nice fucking useless enemies. Like, why would they do that? Ah oh, yes, we're vulnerable to the thing that Samus has, and it makes us actively stop fighting for a short time. That's great. Vinny, was this the game that had the really funny entry about the power toilet? I don't know what you're talking about, chat member. That was Prime 2? I don't even remember that, if that's in the game. Vinny, did you see the mitochondria compilation on Reddit? I did, yes. I forgot to actually show it, like download it and show it, but yeah, it's every time I said the word mitochondria in Parasite Eve. Security alert, all stations, bioform. Samus Aran has made Planetfall on Talon 4. The hunter is among us. Classic comic on the mentality of space pirates. What's this? File A, Metroids mutates and kills thousands when exposed to any energy source. File B, phase on energy source that causes any creature to mutate and kill thousands. Mutates and kills thousands. Delicious candy. Yeah, pretty much. God damn it. Fell off again. Plus ratio and L and all that. Attention all units, report to your battle stations. Failure to comply with this order is an act of treason. Treason is punished, punishable by termination. So you have a choice. You can get terminated by Samus, or you can just, like, have a space pirate terminate you. What a nice company to work for. The severance package is when they sever your head from your body. <laughs> Boy, my health is extremely low right now. Please tell me there's a safe point nearby. No. No. No! Ow! Morphology Elite Pirate. Phase on Enhanced Space Pirate. Incredibly strong, armored, and well-armed. God, that's made so much more terrifying by lack of save point. Science team is re uh, attempting to reverse engineer Samus Aran's Aran's arsenal. See, now I'm, my brain is switching between the two pronunciations. Based off of data acquired from her assaults on our forces. Progress is slow, but steady. <clears throat> Command would dearly enjoy turning Aran's weapons against her. We believe we can implement beam weapon prototypes in three cycles. Aran's power suit technology remains a mystery. Especially the curious morph ball function. All attempts at duplicating it have ended in disaster. 
Four test subjects were horribly broken and twisted when they engaged our morph ball prototypes. Science team wisely decided to move on afterward. <laughs> oh my god. That's some permanent fucking spine damage. What, why would they even need to be a ball? Oh no. Chat, what do I do? I don't remember. This would be a phenomenal farming spot. You know, if it wasn't for the fucking poison gas. Uh, okay, no, no, this is a phenomenal farming spot. Oh, they just dropped the lowest health. Oh my god, lowest. Oh boy. Oh man, I'm right in the middle of a room with a bunch of fucking elite pirates. Bamboo. It's too quiet. Is that, is that a puddle of, like, piss? Blue piss, I don't know what space pirates piss looks like. And neither do you, chat. They really make you work for the power bombs in this game. Never a more welcome sight. Have I seen with my own eyes. Someone said I asked Miyamoto and he said that space pirate piss was green. M well, I think joke's on you because Miyamoto didn't really have anything to do with the Metroid series. Oh, so if you go mad because of fucking Phazon, they just put you in an arena so that you can, like, fight a giant elite unit and help it test its capabilities. Force field disengaged Metroid containment area will be breached. Science team reminds all personnel to refrain from antagonizing Metroid. Severe penalties will be enforced for all violations of this order. It's almost a little... Darth Vader in that. Severe violations will be enforced. I love the music in his voice. Like, he, he actually, like, sometimes he kind of sings his lines as Darth Vader. It's like... It's so good. Spectral presence detected. Well, I'm in the fungal funny caverns right now, so we'll get there later. Oh, they said- someone said they had another scan, too. Blimpy, why you no scan? I, I thought I did. Oh, other end. No, I don't. I don't like uh, Metro at other end. Okay, well that was um, a little scary at first, but made it through. What a great noise that is, Vinny! You should do sound effects for video games. My weep. My weep. My my famous thermal visor impression goes like this. Yum 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 yum. Let's go up the red one. Oh shit! I won't let you get the yum yums. That's the worst thing I've said in years. God. You know what I like about Metroids? That they they do look silly. Cause like you know, it's not that I I'm against modern enemy design, and I- I know it's- this is a huge generalization. But I feel like... a lot of games would... if they had to be like, okay, so here's a creature that sucks the energy and life force out of... the main character. I feel like they would make it look... like this beastly... like, fucking... demonic looking thing, and I just like, you see it so much... But here's this little jellyfish fella, from the 80s. Chat, seeing the comparison of Samus's face from the original Metroid Prime to this version, it's, like, really drastically better in this version. But no, it's just, like, um, early 2000s video game face and early 2000s lighting. It just makes it look kind of weird compared to now. Okay, there's the shortcut. And there's the... Oh! Well, Loki, I just went surfing with a bunch of kombucha. Yeah, like I had it strapped to my back and I had a straw and I was surfing. It was really purified, in fact. I actually did some meditation while I was on the surfboard, too. I think I would like to hang out with Owen Wilson. But I kind of genuinely feel like Owen Wilson would be a lot of fun to hang out with. Or at the very least, just a really nice guy. He seems like he would listen to everything you say intently, 
and have something interesting to offer. He's in chat, he's just shy. <laughs> I do wonder if there have ever been any, like, super famous, notable people that have lurked in this chat. I mean, I'm actually... I know there are a couple. Like, people I've actually kind of got to know a little bit. So I wonder if, like, Timothy Chalamet, who used to mod Xbox controllers, has watched, like, Jerma or something. He probably has. Desert is very famous and has giant balls. That's correct, yeah. That's, that's correct. They're like kumquats. Y you can see, chat, you can see Samus's hands. Look, she opens them. Like she, yep, she does the thing. She does the thing. Yeah, Retro was e extremely detail-oriented. Remember when you used to stream until 4? <laughs> yeah. The Yam. Well, sometimes it was like... I wanted to end the stream at like 3. And then 3 slipped into like 3.30 and then sometimes it ended at 4. Oh, God. What was the latest you've ever streamed? I don't remember, but I seem to recall like Dragon Quest Builders 2. People were like, no, Vin, this will only take like an hour. And it took like two and a half hours extra. Probably like, yeah, 5 a.m. maybe. I always rejected mornings because to me they represented like school and like authority. And you have to be up early and be at the job on time and trade Deutschmarks to Helsinki. Another reason I was going to bed so late is my friends were bar rats and they would stay out until like three. So that just became like normal. Not bar rats. Hey, not yet, Jamesh. My wife, is she no good? Not that. Is Jerma actually writing? Is this actually happening? While I'm doing a fucking Borat impression. Wow. You always get raided during a horrible bit. Yeah, that's true. Big balls made of kumquats. <clears throat> the power of our temple and the 12 artifacts has sealed in you. I was just talking about how I hung out with a bunch of Borats when I was younger. Like, it was like four Borats in gray suits. We were up until three in the morning, and that's why I ended up staying up so late. Thank you, Jerma, if you're here. I don't know if you are. Um, how do you feel about crude oil? You want the raid song? All right. Here's the raid song. What the f that just joined that haven't seen Metroid Prime and are just like, wait, is this guy in a half pipe? And the answer is yes, this is actually a gameplay mechanic. And you could probably thank Tony Hawk for this. Thank you, Tony Hawk. You say that every 20 minutes. I should probably explain that bit, but, uh... Okay, for anyone who doesn't know this, here's a little story. Story time. Um... I forget what game it was. Maybe someone can remind me, but Square... ...gave me... ...a key for a video game. And in the contract, which by the way, it wasn't a sponsorship, it was just the key for the game. In this, like, document that they sent me... They basically said that you had to thank Square Enix every 20 minutes during gameplay. And that that was non-negotiable. But then, there was some weird verbiage in relation to this. And it seems like even if you played other video games, you also had to thank Square Enix every 20 minutes. <laughs> if it was part of the same stream. You're wrong about that part. Okay, so then I conflated my memories. And that was just a complete, like, lie. Never mind. Okay. I thought maybe, like, Square just wrote the document wrong. <laughs> I think that was a bit that I started doing. Well, I'm playing Metroid Prime, I gotta thank Square every 20 minutes. And I just pretended that that was real. Yeah, I can't believe they made trees look like trees in this game. In the remaster. They sent me stuff for Crisis Core. And they sent me a key, and they were very accommodating. They sent me a little jacket for Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. And there was no such weird thank you, Square Enix. They just sent me a bunch of free shit and sent me the game. And I was like, me? Gungaga. Also, for anyone who hasn't seen this game in action, and like, you just got here through a raid... This is one of the best remasters I've ever played. Like, yeah, genuinely, it's amazing. Thank you, Nintendo. <laughs> Every 20 minutes.
Uh, thank you, but I, I'm going to stop now. Okay, while that's happening, I, you know, I mentioned ginger ale in that video, so I'm going to get some ginger ale at, hmm, what is that, midnight? Great plan. I, I'm such a badass. I drink ginger ale at midnight. Why ginger ale? You sick? No, ginger ale's delicious. Why do you need to be sick? I, I'm sick of that. Plasma beam is next. There's a part of me that's like dreading when this ends because I'm enjoying it so much. I'm glad I took my time with it and didn't rush through it. And I'm glad I really got a chance to appreciate it. But we are getting, you know, closer to the end of the game. So if you compare the original charge, it's just one shot and then a longer charge. This is three shots and a shorter charge. So it's about the same amount of time from when the big uh, charge ends up being ready. Chat, which Metroid Prime had the best soundtrack? I see a lot of ones or twos. Only a couple threes, but it looks like, I would say from what I'm seeing in chat, generally all of them had good songs. I think um, there's some really, really great songs and remixes in uh, Prime 2. Torvis Bog, I think, is my favorite Metroid Prime song, period. But one, maybe, um, there's a couple other songs that I like a little bit better, maybe. Or not better, but like, um, just the, the overall package might be a little stronger on one, from what I remember. One is more consistently good. That's a better way to say that, yeah. I saw Blur in... 2015, they put out The Magic Whip, which is a great album. And, uh, I got to see them at Williamsburg Hall of Music. And chat, I was close enough to the stage in this theater, this small theater, small-ish theater, that Damon splashed water on me. And they did all of Magic Whip, and they did a couple songs from their past. It wasn't a long show, but it was great. It was really, like, fucking one of those moments I'll never forget. What's your favorite Prime suit? The light suit is great. Yeah, the light suit is really good. I like the one with the fucked up, like, shoulders. But the light suit, I think, is the, is the best looking one. The shoulders is the dark suit, I think. But, uh, like, light suit is a better looking one. I don't know why I wanted to kill that thing so bad. I just I just needed it dead, chat. I, I love the way... I know this isn't a question, but I love the way the suit looks in Metroid Dread. Just that default, like, blue Samus suit. I fucking love that suit. I think that is one of the best suits Metroid has ever had. Like, not, not Metroid like the characters named Metroid, but you know what I mean. That's my opinion. Chat seems to agree, but I love the way that looks. The design of it is fantastic. I kind of put that on the same level as, like, Link wearing blue in Breath of the Wild. It's like, here's this iconic character, but... Now, now they're blue. Which means, chat, the next Mario game, Mario has to be blue. What is the purpose of this room, though? Like, why are they building this? Who is building this? You know, you know what? The Spates, the Spates Pirates built this as, like, a torture room. When one of the pirates steps out of line, they put them in there, and they're like, think about what you've done. Problem is, they just always die. Would you prefer Prime 4 to play it safe or make more dramatic changes to the formula? Um, I think Prime 4 should be Prime subtitle and start a new trilogy. And play it generally kind of safe. Because I said it before, I don't think Prime 4 is going to be on the Switch. I think it'll be on whatever the next Switch will be, whenever that is. And I do have my theories about when that will be out. I don't know when exactly, but I, I think it would be nice if it was sooner rather than later. But I, I don't know for sure. Honestly, Switch is fairly old now. Oh yeah! Yeah, no, this, this console's been out for a long time. We're... It, it's, it's time. But I, I think Nintendo could probably get away with making, you know, a very obviously backwards compatible system. And still see lots of sales 
for the Switch games that pre-exist. So yeah, Prime 4 could play it safe, I think, and just focus on making a fucking killer Metroid Prime experience and take inspiration from the first game and some of the best stuff from the other games and just play it kind of safe but also do more and then I think if there's going to be any more Troids after that then you have room to really do something drastic you little bastard you little bastard, get out of here I was just talking about this the other day like I love Breath of the Wild a lot I think that game is phenomenal and I had so much fun playing it, and I still think about it, and Tears of the Kingdom can't come soon enough. That said, to me, I view it as a different thing. There's 2D Zelda, there's 3D Zelda, like Ocarina of Time, Majora, Twilight Princess, and then there's open world Zelda. And then Zelda 2, whatever the fuck is going on there, I don't know, but that's its own thing too. There are things that 3D Zelda can do that 2D Zelda cannot do, obviously. And and there are things that I really like about that. Ah, big shit fuck. Big shit fuck. Boy, we are spider balling today. Look at all that spider balling. Now imagine you get here and you don't have a fucking power bomb. Oh, I think the plasma beam actually looks better. Like, quite a large degree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks fantastic. Like, what is this? Did you ever stop and think, like, they had to figure out, like, alright, what does this ice power-up look like? I don't know, just make it move and shit. That's the ice spreader. I mean, it's a different type of plasma beam than, like, Super Metroid and the other Metroid games, but it's cool in its own way. It just functions as, like, fire. Magma shot. Do you think that they should give multiplayer another shot for Metroid? Um, Nintendo has their premiere multiplayer shooter in Splatoon now. So I don't I don't know if they would do it. Do I think they should do it? I mean, what if Nintendo released a $20 eShop game, Metroid Prime Hunters 2? If you're asking me would would I like that? The answer is fucking yes. And again, Federation Force, that's going to be one of those things where it's People look back at it, and already people are like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was just that's not the way we wanted the Metroid drought to end. Which is also, incidentally, the name of the next Metroid game. It's gonna be called Metroid Drought. Do I hear an item? I knew it was one of them. But no, Federation Force wasn't, like, terrible. I played a little bit of it. It was just very bland and, uh... Really terrible timing. If it was released as the 3DS game alongside, like, a Wii U Metroid, as that is the system that was out at the moment, like a Fusion Prime sort of thing, then yeah, it would have it would have been fine and people would have been like, yeah, it's okay. There are some games I know just pulp my viewer retention. And that's not why I do this. But tactical strategy games are probably not as entertaining as something like Pizza Tower. Just thinking out loud here. I mean, I have to think like, okay, well, do I want to stream that game or do I want to maybe play it and record it off stream? So I'm not really sure what I want to do with Advance Wars yet. I'm just happy that it's coming back. I think the visuals look pretty good. They're not like amazing. They're not as bad as people are saying they are. And in regards to Advance Wars, I kind of think my favorite is, um, Advance Wars DS. Dual Strike. But Days of Ruin had a lot of cool shit in it. 
Even though it went for, like, darker and edgy style, which maybe they thought would help sales, because at the time, that's what was selling, like, and what was on other consoles, I guess. Um, Days of Ruin was edgy, but there were some really great gameplay additions, and I liked the mission structure. I thought it was a really good game. I, I haven't played it in many years, but I, I really liked that game. The Taming of Thardis continues, barring unfortunate setbacks, it can be installed on Phase on Mind Patrol by Lotus Milestone. These fucking space pirates always doing some wacky shit. Yeah, let, let's bring rocks to life because we're, we're fucking nutty. Like, I think the Phase on went to their fucking brains. It's like, like microplastics and lead. Chat, which, um, which juice had microplastics in it? That recently, because I bought some juice today, and I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm getting only the best microplastics. All of them? Sick. What can be done here, I wonder? What the fuck do I get under there? Oh, right. Stalactites. I hope I don't have to explain the trick once again to di differentiating, differentiating stalagmites and stalactites, chat. Well, if you must, stalactites hang because T-I-T, titties hang. Do you understand, chat? And stalagmites do not hang because they are not T-I-T, other way around. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute, wait, no, hang on. That's correct. Do stalactites hang? Yeah, stalactites are like icicles from the ceiling. I was correct. Is this the icicle, the stalactite that Neryl spent 30 missiles trying to destroy, I wonder? Alright, well, it didn't take me 30 missiles, you just need to do it from the right angle. <laughs> Some massive hangers, you know? <laughs> Say something else, please. Colonel, I've infiltrated the Diaper Chief's lair. There appear to be some massive mommy milkers here. Snake, those aren't mommy milkers. Those are daddy diapers. Oh no. The Lale Lule Lo. Yeah, I'm just fucked out of my mind on ginger ale right now. Don't mind me, chat. I'm at the point of the night where I don't really have much commentary left other than monster noises. Someone said, I don't get how she turns into a ball. Well, it basically starts like this. Um, ancient Chozo technology removes several ribs, and she goes like this. It's kind of like when Dom becomes a car in the Fast and Furious. He goes like, I'm gonna be Zamets and I'm gonna be It's like that. My name is Arizon Ford, and I'm, I'm Vin Diesel's father in the new Fast movie. Jay Leno's got a cameo appearance in a new Fast and Furious movie. <clears throat> Overall, my favorite type of Metroid Beam stuff is when you can combine them and create weird combinations with them. I like that a lot. Someone said I like the wide beam. When I played Fusion, I noted that was a weird choice. Because the Spacer in Super Metroid is basically the wide beam in um, Fusion. I mean, I too kind of like it, but it's to me it just strikes me as a little strange. Just what is it? It's wide. What is it made of? Wide. It's made of wide. All right. Well, a Spacer sounds like a laser. That sounds like futuristic stuff. But what? Is, what do you mean wide beam? It's made of wide. What's a Spacer? It's made of space. Why are Samus's shoulder pads just giant ass balls? Servos. Now, I don't know what that means precisely, but it sounds good to me. Wasn't there a really um, detailed cross section of Samus's armor? What was that in? Was that like Nintendo Power or was that like the player's guide for Metroid or something? To me, that's like um, when you can like buy the Enterprises, like blueprints. And it has all the, you know, 
the sections of the spacecraft. And then certain parts of it are just fantasy science. And while it is cool, it's still just fantasy science. Someone saying there's mini turbines inside the shoulders, possibly power generators. Again, fantasy science, but that sounds... that sounds awesome. <laughs> I love the way that sounds, and I will accept that answer. For people that aren't Trekkies, but also get really, really into anime and don't understand the appeal of Star Trek, I'm not trying to call you out or anything. Essentially, it's the same kind of thing, like it's just this world that you can get lost in, but for science nerds. Honestly, not even for science nerds. I don't really get as into the science aspect of Star Trek as I do the characters, but it just depends on the kind of things you're into. I like, uh, I like spaceships. Oh, shit! I don't know, the Phazon just looks cool. Kinda wanna, like, it, does it taste like a nerd's rope? I, I would say it's plural, because there's more than one nerd on the rope. Chad, I think I'm gonna go to that save point. Yeah, I'm just gonna- I'm gonna hit up that save point, and then next time I play this, we'll get the rest of the artifacts. Almost a little sad that Metroid Prime is just about over, but let's hope we get uh, Prime 2 and 3. Oh my god- oh my god! Whoa! What's the scan people want me to get? There's another scan on, on this dude? It's kind of too late now. Vinny, I loved your Among Us video this morning. When do I get my check? That Among Us video, they were nice. There were a couple, like, people that weren't nice. But, um, people were like, Vinny, why would you subject yourself to playing with toddlers? The thing about that was, I just thought it would be funny to go into a group of randos. But consistently, for an hour and a half, every group was just babies. It wasn't the intent, it just kind of happened. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, uh, I saw Mandalorian, just to have something to talk about. And I already forgot what happened in it. It was fine. It was fine. It, they're just setting stuff up. After Andor, I'm- um, whoa. Hello? Crust? Cr crust. Hello? 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 Crust? Crust, crust, crust. What is that? Crust? Yeah, you good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm alright. I was just hearing some crust on the microphone there. Um... After Andor, going back to Mandalorian... ...is- is different. I still really, really wish that they waited to bring back Baby Yoda. I'm having an approved evening, but I've been- I've been feeling a little crusty, just physically. I think it's, um... Just a little fatigue, or maybe... It could be the Long Ovid. Could be. Aside from that, though, I'm doing the best I can, and that's not too bad. Today, though, I cooked, so I was busy making, like, cheddar cheese meatloaf things, um, and then the rest of the day I was finishing up video stuff for the premiere, because I edited two of the videos, um, getting all of it ready, you know, for YouTube uploads, uh, Bandcamp, um, even the eight-second clips that you'll see on Spotify, which you then... If you want to do that, what you have to do is cut up the video a little bit and get, like, the best moments. So that took me a while, um, for ten different songs. So, yeah, I haven't really had... M t today and the past week, I haven't had a ton of time to myself. I mean, it's a good busy. When you work on something you like and you believe in, it's not... It's not too bad. You know, if you're working for, like, a guy named Lyle, and he doesn't even let you wipe your ass without an argument. Then it sucks. Fucking Lyle. Uh, that wasn't a specific reference. People are like, who's been you talking about? No, no, literally just a name. All right. L let's go back, because that was a mistake. I mean, I hope the flamethrower was worth it. I think it is. I think it is. Back to the elite research room. Is elite the boost? Best YouTuber? Wait, Elite Research Room? Not Metroid Quarantine? What are you- what are you talking about? Maintenance tunnel? Um... 
artifact? Well, where is that room? It's it's up there. Oh, 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 Chad, Chad, I gotta go back up there. <sighs> this is the backtracking game. The game leads you back there once you beat the boss. No. Oh, this is the special scan. Phazon Elite Pirate. Pirate infused with energized Phazon. The drastically lower lifespan that comes with this process is of little concern to the pirate research team. Also, Grotto Beasts is now available for pre-order. It's a little expensive, but for the quality. And also that it's custom and not mass-produced. Yeah, I got, I got me a Grotto Beast. Will you ever make Vine Beasts? I, that's just too much. That's just too much of an undertaking. Boy, there sure are a lot of Metroids in this room. Fuck. There sure were a lot of Metroids in this room. Yeah, let's, um, let's talk for a minute about Diablo, because there is a beta coming soon. I'm gonna talk as a Diablo fan. I'm a little disappointed there's only five classes and no Paladin or Crusader. Okay, now that's all I care about saying in that regard. Um... Blizzard eats dick. And they've been awful. It's not the Blizzard we grew up with. I know that they still can do decent WoW expansions, apparently. But Blizzard is just a rotten shell of its former self. Vinny, have you ever hold, uh, heard of this old indie band called Bon Jovi? They have a couple of interesting songs. I heard that one song where he's on a fucking motorcycle horse. Someone said Bon Jovi is like a worse Aerosmith. <laughs> well, I gotta be honest, chat member. I'm not exactly an Aerosmith fan. And, uh, hearing that, you are putting Jovi at the bottom, bottom, bottom of the barrel there. I love these little scummy blue caves. Oh god. Wow! Hmm. Love scummy blue caves. Alright, we are safe. No, we're not. Oh, fuck, there's a map room. Or missile room. No. No, no. Oh boy, I needed a save point, not a missile room. Vinny, why you hate the thermal visor so much? I... I, I really don't like the way it looks in this game. The blurriness of it. I think this is the one thing that they... They dropped the ball on. Even though it makes cool noises, but that's just, it always made cool noises. Yes, mushroom. Someone said I would love a taste of Phazon. It probably tastes like Warheads. Or like... Triple Sour Patch Kids. Oh, that's dumb. That's dumb. I, I had a dream. I knew I woke up and wrote something in my phone. And I forgot what it was. Oh god, that's so dumb. I thought it would be like a cool band name. <laughs> I don't even want to say it out loud. It's it's that bad, Chad. It's that stupid. It's really stupid. It's, uh, dead skin cells. But... S <laughs> the cells is spelled S-E-L-L-S. Like, apparently I thought that was so good, I had to write that down in my, um, phone. From a dream. Or you could just do skin cells. Which it does. And then you have social commentary. Oh, shit. Omega Pirate, most powerful of the elite pirate forces. Ah! Oh shit, regular pirates. Where is Oli um, Elite Omega? Where is he? Oh, there we go. Just a little bit more. Damn, chat. I didn't quite get it. Ah, oh, I gotta do it again. I, di I didn't one cycle, chat. I didn't one cycle. Oh, that's bullshit. I got this, I got this.
Phazon suit. Your suit has been infused with pure Phazon. This corruption prevents damage from Phazon radiation. I mean, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Even if it is just a recolored um, Varia suit. How much do you think Samus weighs? Like with the, with the suit, how, like with the suit on. Oh, this, oh god, it's a new Metroid. Vision Metroid. Metroid with the ability to split into two forms. Wouldn't it be great if things in real life just made cool, like, weird noises like that? Just like, wow. Wow. We have computers in our homes, chat, and they don't make weird noises. They always had, like, cool beep-boop noises. Our, our computers just, like, we just hear coil whine. Because everything has LEDs now, but I want things that make noise on purpose. I swear to God, like, every time I see an ad for something on Twitter, it's just, like, some scam product. <laughs> With a bunch of emojis, like, eggplant and, like, wet emoji. This scooper of pet pooper will change your life. Or, like, um... Things that can cut vegetables fast. I bought one of those slap chops, you know, chat. That Vince offered. He was like, that's his name, Vince Offer. He was like, I got a slap chop for you. You're gonna love these nuts. And then, like, he just slaps. He slaps the nuts. Ridley Scott's here to make his new movie. Oh no, he wants to make another alien movie. Stop him. I just love how they gave him like missiles and stuff. Looks awesome. The model looks awesome. This whole fight looks really, really good in the remake. Meta Ridley, genetically enhanced Ridley Metaform, reborn and evolved through pirate technology. Come on, missile, hit, hit, missile. God damn it. It chases for a little while. I feel like someone should mix in Liquid Snake yelling at Snake from the helicopter during that fight in Metal Gear Solid. Snake! See you in hell, brother! I'm going to watch that new Vine Sauce video. I heard he's a fan of mine. <laughs> it fired off a, a fucking super missile. <laughs> Nothing happened. Fucking timing. Ridley, I swear on me, Jacobs. I really haven't even gotten the patterns down for this part. I got the pattern. No, nope, never mind. Nope. Got it. A little late, but thanks. Um, whoa. That was a nice voice crack. All right, impact crater. I don't know how long this would take, but maybe we'll just try it. 20 minutes. Actually 20 minutes? Now these are some scummy noises. Oh boy. I feel like Gandalf. I have no memory of this place. This is it, Luigi! Oh, this got a really, really good graphical upgrade. From what I remember. Which is to say nothing, so never mind. <laughs> Just looks nice. Title drop. Metroid Prime. Highly evolved phase on producing life form. I think this is one of the Metroid games where collecting a fuckload of missiles is most useful. Like, they, they all are, but this one feels like... Because of the how powerful the, the missile beam attacks are. It's like, collect... Collection is extremely important. God, this fight is so fucking cool, though. Whoa! The fuck? 
Next area, next area. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you thought it was over. That's cute. What is that, like... animals? Metroid Prime, the core essence of Metroid Prime. Scan indicates that the Phazon energy form of Metroid Prime is invulnerable to all conventional weapons. Only attacks from Phazon fused arm cannon will damage it. It generates pools of Phazon when it attacks. Use these to fuel your suit's Phazon weapon system. The entity can also spawn Metroids. To assist it in battle, rendering itself invisible when it does so. You heard right, chat. Phazon weapon systems. Hyper mode. Yeah! Wouldn't it be great if you could just have the phase on weapon at all times? Alright, over halfway. <sighs> one more good one. One more good one. God. <laughs> yeah, that was Samus's soul. Oh, I forgot, you don't actually play through the escape sequence in this one. I guess you do at the very beginning. Chozo's faith in Samus has been well rewarded. And now, a new star shines in the universe. What? The bounty hunter, Samus Aran. What future and fate await her? I ain't never heard this narration in my life. She looks awesome, by the way. Chat, you gotta compare this helmetless uh, Samus to the original. It, the difference is night and day. This is so good. Wait, Metroid is girl? Chat, do you get another ending? If you 100%, I forget. Do you get anything? You do. What do, what do you get? Oh, the dark Samus teaser. That's right, that's right. Playing through this again, I noticed some things that were not perfect. I don't think the game is perfect, but I still love it. And I think for its time, and even now, it's a phenomenal game. And I think that the game has so many things right. It does so many things right. And I love the world it creates. I love like actually getting into it. And uh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, it still does so much better than it does wrong. Uh, just on a side note about this remake, you've heard me say it, XSplit Darkness aside, um, one of the best looking Switch games, one of the best remasters, without it being a complete remake, and I think they did a really great job with this, and I love playing it, and I'm happy it exists. I really hope the same thing happens for 2 and 3, because as a trilogy, they deserve it, and this gives me faith in um, Metroid Prime 4. I hope so. So if you get 100% completion, this is what you see. Which is a thread that's setting up the sequels. Percentage complete, 87%. Total time, 12 minutes, 10 seconds. And hard difficulty and some new extras.